Hello, everyone, and welcome to our EVEX webinar on lean manufacturing in AX 2012. Um, we have some exciting stuff to show you. Today, I am joined by my colleague, Jeremy Schmee, who's going to be going through a lot of the functionality in lean. Um, we'll finish up with some of our add-on solutions at EVEX. But before we kind of get into it, um, I wanted to introduce EVEX and kind of who we are, for those of you who don't know us. So EVEX is a, is a global uh, Dynamics AX CRM and division partner. Um, we are headquartered out of the UK, and we have our North America headquarters in Atlanta, which is where Jeremy and I are today. We also have offshore development in Jordan and a consulting practice in Saudi. Worldwide, we're over 280 staff. Um, in terms of installations of Dynamics, we have over 300 installations worldwide. We were founded back in 99. Uh, we're part of the Axe Pact, which if you're a global organization looking for an implementation, we leverage our Axe Pact partners in certain countries or regions where we don't have a presence. We're privately owned and managed. Uh, we're 100% Microsoft focused, so we focus solely on the Dynamics products as well as the business intelligence stack, all based on Microsoft. Uh, in terms of size and growth, we're about 400, uh, 44 million in annual revenues globally, and we're constantly profitable. In terms of, again, what we focus on, very much ERP, CRM, and BI. On top of that, uh, we can cover mobile, field service, Office 365. Uh, we've gotten into the private public Azure space, and we have a managed services offering. In terms of our reputation with Microsoft, you can see to the left, we're a gold partner in all three competencies. We've been reseller of the year in the UK for the past five years. And we were a global partner of the year back in 2013, which really speaks to our ability to handle global implementations of all sizes. And this past year and for the past previous years, we've also been awarded Inner Circle, which is only given to the top 1% of partners worldwide. So our topic today is lean manufacturing in AX 2012. And I'm going to hand it over to Jeremy Shmi, one of our lean consultants, who's going to take you through a lot of the functionality. Just a couple ground rules. Um, I have everybody muted in terms of um, keeping it quiet for the presentation. If you do have questions, please use the question feature in the webinar section, and uh, we'll look to answer them. All right, without further ado, I will pass it over to Jeremy. Hello, everyone. So. Like Charlotte said, my name is Jeremy Schmid. I'm a uh, functional consultant, uh, kind of focused in uh, manufacturing, so that includes lean and then your traditional discrete and process manufacturing implementations. And I'm based in the Atlanta in the Atlanta office here with with Evex. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to give you a, an introduction to lean manufacturing in AX 2012. We're going to go through some slides. And then uh, we will get into the system and do a few demonstrations on um, on the different functionalities within Lean in, in 2012. So this just summarizes our agenda. So we, we did a sh our short introduction there, and, uh, and then we're going to go into kind of the concepts around Lean and then how we, we set those up in AX 2012, and then our demonstrations and a Q&A session after. Um, we can open up any questions that are that are raised throughout the uh, presentation, and then we have a, a, some additional slides on some of the next steps that you may you may be interested in taking if um, around uh, lean and, and AX. So one of the first questions we often get from from uh, customers is well, why go to a lean software? So a lot of times when um, you, you may hear the argument that if you're in a lean organization, you don't you don't technically need an ERP system, so if you're truly lean, then it should take away uh, that requirement. Well, we've actually seen throughout a number of impl implementations that there is great value in having a uh, ERP system, so particularly AX 2012 um, with a lean manufacturing environment. So these are some of the, the points that we wanted to identify. I'll just highlight a couple of them. So the first one there is transparency throughout the entire organization. So that basically is by linking lean into your ERP system, you, you tie it into the rest of your supply chain. So 
That includes the sales and marketing that you're doing, the purchasing, um, so, as well as the financials. So everything is tied into that single system. So it makes it easier for all departments to kind of uh, stay tied together and have, have one story um, that everybody can rely on and, um, and they know where the sources, source for the data is coming from. The third point on there is Kanban portals. Um, so as with a number of different areas that in um, AX 2012, you can link them up to the, to the enterprise portal. Um, so in this case, we're able to actually link some of the Kanban functionality in 2000, AX 2012 to the portal as well. So again, that just increases the visibility level um, throughout the supply chain. Number six there is KPIs and management reports. So this is one of the really important things for organizations that have specified KPIs um, in that we're able to, by putting, putting lean in, by putting lean into AX2012, we're able to report off of those um, different measurements that are important to an organization um, and then use our KPIs. Finally, the last one here is MRP integration. So we can actually, as, as part of 2012, they actually added an integration feature where Kanbans are, are seen as, as transactions by MRP. So it does give us the ability to, to have MRP generate Kanbans for us, which is which was a new feature which we've seen some of our customers using. Um, so it allows you to not to also pull on some of that powerful functionality around master scheduling um, to generate that demand for you. This next slide is, a, is an example of a KPI board that we have at uh, one of our customers, and it is displaying deli uh, delivery date performance. Um, so this is this is in the shop floor, and this is only possible because they've linked uh, their, they've linked their lean manufacturing uh, flow into into the ERP system. They're able now to report on on the KPI, which is one of the most important ones for them, was around making sure they were hitting their delivery dates on time. So this is one of those visible things that now everybody that's on the shop floor can use to track the performance. And again, it goes all the way to the top, so uh, the top of the organization can continue to see how performance is progressing. So what is Lean in AX2012? There's a couple of really key kind of pillars that, uh, that make, uh, that really build the Lean concepts. Um, so we have pool, build to order, visual, and mixed mode. And I'll go into a little more detail on uh, these next slides. So the concept of pool, um, this is really a, an important one in Lean in that everything is, is, is pool driven. So if we took the scenario where a customer places an order, um, that demand could trigger uh, components to be pulled from a raw material warehouse to a production warehouse. And then that, that actual finished good that is sold and produced to the customer is being pulled to the customer. So it's because of that demand, um, that sales order demand that was entered, that that order um, is being created and then and eventually um, provided to the customer. So we can use those in a couple of different areas. Like I said, so we have in production. So that's when we actually are making something and also transferring material. Um, so that goes back to the components being driven between warehouses because of an upstream pool. Um, and then finally there at the bottom there, we also mentioned subcontracting. So we can also use this concept of pool with our subcontracting processes. Um, so again, if you have a particular item in the bill of material um, that is tied to a vendor, the same, the, the same uh, methods work where the sales work can be entered. And uh, because that's a, a subcontracted item, um, a combine can be used to pull that from a subcontractor to, to your warehouse. So a lot of the implementations that we've done, we've seen that um, most or a lot of them use it are in a make to order manufacturing environment. So Lean is really perfect for that build to order scenario. Um, so what it allows us to do is we really, we're keeping low inventory. So we're only building what we need when we need it. So this kind of goes, ties back slightly to the concept of pool to where a customer places an order and we build uh, to satisfy that customer. So we're not keeping things on stock. And so there's a lot of lean functionality and different combines that we can use that are going to allow us to keep uh, that build to order um, environment. And what we call these, we call event driven combines. Um, so we'll talk more about those later on. Um, but those are the combine types that are going to allow us um, 
to only take action from from a, a, a signal um, up in our su uh, supply chain. So that example, sales order being entered. So it, Lean is all about being visual and uh, transparent. Um, so these are two boards that we that we have inside AX 2012. Um, the t one on the top left is called our Kanban schedule board, and this is a board for planning. So think of your your or your planner and your organization would use this board, um, and he can see the what the main purpose of this is that he can see the different capacity levels in his work cells um, in in the in production. Um, so there's some really easy functionality to drag and drop um, across this board to basically uh, load or level the capacity across those different work cells. Um, so you can see on the, that top left uh, work uh, um, bucket there, it's for Friday, and we can see that our current capacity is set at 90 out of 100 pieces. So he can see that if another order comes in, that day's almost filled to capacity, so he may want to move that out to a later date that doesn't have any capacity tied to it yet. In addition to that, we can also set up colors to help identify the different products or product families that we're using. And it's another way to basically allow you to uh, visually manage uh, your planning board to kind of understand what products are being planned on what days, um, as well as keeping track of whether things are on time or where they've been started. So you can see a number of these, um, number of those uh, these Kanbans on the schedule board here have this little circle with a red dot here. That's another signal we can use to basically tell us that that order is late. So there are a number of different signals that come onto this board that help help the planner understand uh, what's going on in his production schedule. The board on the bottom right is the process board. So this is the board that's going to be used for production. And again, it lists all the different Kanbans that are that are out there and you can you can view ones that have been completed and ones that are planned um, so that you can manage the production process for that. As well, you can attach things like production instructions to the process board. Um, so way again, we like to think about this is this is an actual board that's sitting on the production floor so that it's very visual and um, and the team members are able to use things like the production instructions here to know how to how to complete assembly. Again, the colors that we can use here help identify identify what items or product families are being used for this particular work cell. And we'll look at those boards a little bit more in more detail when we get into we actually get into AX uh, for our demonstration. So mixed mode. So it, you don't you don't just have to be if you if you decide that um, you want to use some of the lean functionality, you don't just have to use that. You're you're actually able to use a mixed mode our mixed manufacturing uh, system where we've seen customers maybe 50% of their items are lean uh, or would fit better in a lean traditional lean uh, system where 50% the other 50% of the items would fit better in your standard for using production orders um, so you have the option to use both mix and match depending on your your the parts so it's it's whatever system fits fits those parts the best you have the ability to to be flexible there um, in addition to that, there's also a scenario where you can uh, you can drive certain components. So if you're using a production order, um, traditional production order, you can drive components um, using using some of our transfer combines. So you can you can actually mix uh, lean and, uh, and standard production uh, within an, within a single order um, to use some of the, the functionality to move material around. And the last thing to point out here is that, uh, the, like we said earlier, we can MRP now sees it's now sees the uh, Kanban transactions in the system, so it, it can plan for those. Um, and so it's, it just gives you that additional option that if you if you do want MRP to to help plan some of those Kanbans for you, um, it is linked now, and uh, MRP can will generate planned Kanbans um, that then can be managed through your traditional kind of planning and production structure. So this is a good slide that really identifies kind of the, a lot of the functionality that is in AX 2012 from a, from a lean perspective. And uh, it's kind of broken across four different levels here. So we have a lot of things that identify against the organization yourself. So these are a great example. This is your production flow. And we'll talk more about that in the next couple of slides. 
Then we also have a section here on, on planning and scheduling. So we looked at the schedule board. Um, we also have things that we can use like the supply schedule form, which is really a great way of identifying what's coming in and out of, um, of, your, of your warehouse, as well as the ability to use CTP, which is capable to promise, which is a really powerful delivery date uh, control tool um, inside AX that you can tie to a sales order. And it is great with event Kanbans because then it can, it can create um, can create all the Kanbans for you at the, at the time you enter the sales order. So that's a really powerful tool. Then we have the Kanban and pool based execution. So this just goes back to the different, there's a number of different Kanbans that we can use. So we really like to think that we, we give organizations the ability to plan for every part because of different Kanbans and different replenishment strategies that are within AX. Um, it also, like we talked about earlier, we can also use Kanbans in, in our subcontracting processes. And then barcodes. So a lot of times we see customers that are, are most of the time we're using using wedge scanners um, to scan barcodes on, on a Kanban ticket that's sitting on a box to, to empty it and send another to send a replenishment signal back upstream. So um, barcodes are really useful and are able to kind of uh, speed up the process and make it more efficient instead of being in the client always and, and having to go through the actual AX window. And then finally, the one on the left is there's a lot of different costs and functionality that's tied um, to lean manufacturing. So around backflush costing and, and tying it to financial dimensions for your reporting purposes. So what's some of the key setup that we need to take into account when we when we go into an implementation and, and start that initial lean uh, lean setup? So the the top one here is really really kind of one of the most important or the the top level is our production flow. Um, so our production flow really is going to define an end to end process. Um, so a lot of times I like to think about it is we a, a certain product line may be a production flow. So um, and we're going to link similar activities underneath that production flow. So activities are the, those particular steps that we're taking. So we can have activities that are transferring material around. We can have activities that are producing material. So those individual steps are called activities and, we, and those sit underneath that production flow. Um, so production flow, a lot of times if we think about it, it's, it would be we can consider a production flow from the point an order is entered all the way to um, shipping it to the customer. So we are, we are tracking and, uh, and creating activities for those different steps that are important to us in that process. Beneath that we have the Kanbans. Um, so just like you would in a traditional, you know, on, on, in, in a warehouse you would have Kanban, physical Kanban cards. Uh, we have electronic Kanban cards that are in AX um, that we can set up for a lot of different, different parts and different scenarios. Um, like we talked about before. So we can have Kanbans that are, are used to move material around, so transfer material. We can also have Kanbans that are used to produce uh, materials. So inventory management integration, um, this, this basically goes back to what we talked about before of how Lean is really integrated across the board with the rest of the functionality that is within AX 2012. So that means we're integrated to, to our sales and marketing uh, modules and our and our purchasing modules as well as the inventory modules. So the great part about this is that because we're, we're recording all of those transactions, we're able to run reports, um, run reports or build KPIs based off those inventory transactions. So it just gives us visibility, and we're able to use that data um, that we're we're actually physically transacting um, uh, to to improve our processes and identify identify kind of maybe areas we need to improve on. And then finally, this is, the costing structure is all based on the production flow itself. Um, so that's why the production flow is, is really kind of an, one of the most important parts to identify when you when you get into an organization to, to start kind of an implementation is you can have a very complex production flow with a, a ton of steps in it, a lot of activities. You can also have a very simple production flow. Um, so it really depends on the organization. But all the costing that's done is tied to that production flow. So uh, Kind of the basics are you look at what goes into the production flow, so all the material that goes in, um, and then you measure it against the value of the material that comes out of the production flow. Um, and you're able to then run your variance reports of that uh, and measure whether or not you're losing material in there 
in inside the production flow. So in some ways, it's kind of a simple way of looking at the cost going into production versus what's the value of things coming out. This is a graphic on on a kind of this would be a simple production flow, um, and what this what this shows is. If you look here, we have a withdrawal Kanban, so that's withdrawal is something that's moving material, um, transferring material, and this is a supermarket warehouse, this triangle. So we are moving material into this assembly warehouse, and then the production Kanban is what we're consuming that material that's being dragged into the assembly warehouse, and then we're producing our finished good, pushing it out to, um, pushing it out to our shipping area, and then it's being shipped to the customer. So it's a simple, this is just a simple example of how you map the processes that are important inside that production flow um, for making that particular product. So some, some more detail on product, the production flow. Uh, we use the value stream. So the value stream is an important thing to tie to the production flow. And basically, this allows us to, to um, have additional reporting on on the areas where where the value is coming out of for the products we're making in those in those particular production flows, um, we can also support not just a single single step Kanban, but we have something called semi finished um, items as well. So what this allows us to do is we can have we can uh, produce uh, for uh, for an item we can have one step to start production, and then we can have multiple. Uh, steps following that to complete production. So we can actually be moving semi-finished product um, from work cell to work cell. And finally, um, we're able to have, uh, we're able to build multiple versions of our production flow. So we can only have one that's active, uh, but we're, it, but AX allows us to build multiple versions. Um, so what we can continue to improve on uh, the production flow and continue to play around um, until we want to make a new uh, flow active. Um, so it just gives us kind of a a, uh, a building a building area to test and um, and uh, try out new new production flow setups. So again, some of the integration into to basic AX, and we talked about a few of these, but we are integrated into we can integrate Kanban's into MRP. So if we if we choose, we can have the um, we can have master scheduling create planned Kanban's. Uh, we can, we can, from a planning perspective, we can manually or automatically uh, handle the scheduling of Kanban. So, um, depends on depends on the planning that you use within an organization or that, or maybe the particular part. Um, but it's it's a way of of saying whether you want a planner to actually physically uh, plan it for a certain day, or whether you want the system to automatically schedule it for you. Then we have improved visuals for scheduling. So those are some of the boards we looked at, um, particularly the Kanban schedule board. And it's just a great visual tool that, that pulls on a lot of different functionality to make life easier for the planner. Um, and we'll, we'll look at that. It'll be a bit easier to show when we, when we actually get into AX. And then finally, we have the supply schedule form. So the supply schedule form was a new piece of functionality in AX 2012. Um, not necessarily related to Lean, but Lean can integrates into that. Um, and basically, the, su the supply schedule form it, it is showing uh, what's coming in and coming out. So it does a great way of summarizing uh, demand and supply outlook for your organization. Um, and it will take in to account the Kanbans that are being created um, as well. So before we get into our demonstration, there are a couple of building blocks that we that I want to show that are kind of identify some of the things that we'll be seeing. So on the top, those are the different types of Kanbans that we'll, we will see throughout in this demonstration. So we have a fixed quantity Kanban, and we'll talk in more detail about what exactly these Kanban types are. We have a fixed quantity Kanban, a sales event Kanban, and a Kanban line event. Within those, we're going to be producing things, so production Kanbans. And we'll also be transferring material around, so withdrawal Kanbans. And then we'll touch on a couple different pieces of functionality, Kanban quantity calculations, um, look at our schedule board again, and then look at those additional boards, those process boards and transfer boards, um, to just get a better feel for how that visual, uh, those visual boards have, the concept of visual boards have really been put into inside of AX. So I think that brings us to our first, 
start to talk about our first demonstration. So our first demonstration is going to be for a make to stock scenario. Um, and a make to stock scenario uses fixed quantity combines. Okay. So before we get into, into it, let's talk a little bit more about the different combine types that are in NAX that we can use. So like we said before, the combine is really inside of AX is an electronic ticket. Um, and it signals a pool for that item. So it's very similar to the way you would physically have a card. It's, it's the same thing as physically having a card uh, on, the, on the shop floor or in the warehouse, but this is just our electronic version that's in the system. And there are three different main, there are three different types that we'll, that we'll see. So we have a fixed quantity Kanban, which is really for your make to stock scenarios. We have a scheduled Kanban, and then we have an event Kanban. And, and barcode scanning is fully integrated for all, all of those Kanban types. And if you kind of look at this graphic here, you'll see how we have the fixed, the scheduled, and the event here at the top. And we kind of identify which ones fall into make to stock and make to order scenarios. And then beneath that, we have our different Kanban types. So we have production and withdrawal. Production is actually producing an item, and withdrawal is just is moving material. So it may be moving components or it may be moving semi-finished goods around the warehouse. So you can pull on all three of those, whether it be make a fixed scheduled sales event for both a production Kanban or a withdrawal Kanban. So it gives us a lot of flexibility in terms of planning for, for our parts um, because not it, you'll never have that um, or very unlikely that you'll have one type that's going to fit for all of your items. Um, and so you're able to then use these different, these different replenishment strategies to your advantage to make sure it fits your, your parts and, and how you want those to be reordered um, and replenished. So a little more detail about fixed quantity Kanban. So the example, a good example I like to give is in, in a, one of our clients was an automotive uh, company in a traditional kind of assembly line, um, pro, uh, you know, assembly line facility. And if you've ever taken a tour of a uh, of an assembly plant, you'll see a lot of times on the line at the different stations they have they have little bins. Um, that contain things like, you know, screws or, or nuts and bolts. So low cost items um, that they're just that the, the guys working are just pulling from. They're not really taking account of what they're pulling at that time. They're just pulling and using it and using it. Um, and only when they actually scan the Kanban ticket that's tied to that individual bin, they'll scan it and that will empty it in the system. And that would be a signal and to go ahead and replenish that bit. So that's a, that's an example of a fixed quantity combine in that in that it's it's a in the what we'll see in the demonstration is a two bins system. So when one bin is emptied, that is the automatic replenishment signal to go ahead and refill that bin. Um, so there's no date control tied to it or anything like that. It's solely the fixed quantity combine is solely it's a physical scanning. Um, or, or doing it in the system saying that you, you've completed it and emptied it, that's going to drive that replenishment. So it's kind of the simplest and most traditional type of, of lean Kanban that we have. Um, and it's, it's solely driven off that, that scanning, scanning empty um, to drive that replenishment. And the other thing that's good with this is that a lot of times you don't want it in the scenario that I described earlier just now with the, the bins uh, containing like, you know, things like nuts and bolts on, on, a, on an assembly line is, you don't want them to be uh, you don't want them to be keeping track of how many they're using or you know sometimes things you might you might lose a screw or on the ground um, and you don't really care that much because they're low cost items so you just want to you just want to if you have a bin of let's say a thousand screws you just want to scan it empty and it, then it, then that's when it takes that full thousand out of inventory uh, before that you don't really care so it's all driven off that uh, that scanning and replenishment, sending that replenishment signal back out. Scheduled Kanban. So scheduled Kanban is kind of an interesting one. It's, it is, it is the Kanban that you can just, uh, you, your planner can create manually at any time. So, and you can tie a delivery date to it. So it's kind of this, it's most similar to your kind of a standard production order and that it also is linked to MRP. So if you use scheduled Kanbans, you can have MRP, um, based off demand, whether it's a forecast in the system or sales orders, 
you could have MRP use all the all the functionality that's in the master planning module to create scheduled Kanbans for you. So the things to remember with the scheduled Kanban is MRP can create them for you, or you can create them manually yourself. And you can actually tie a delivery date and quantity to them. So you, you're able to specify a little more detail on these than you would in a fixed quantity Kanban. Um, so maybe these are for items that, you know, fixed quantity Kanban is good for items that you know you're going to need, kind of like that, you know, make to stock that you know you're going to need those. Um, and, and you know kind of what the quantity range is that you need. Scheduled may be better for ones that uh, it's not true make to order, but it's things that aren't as common and uh, it allows your planner to have some flexibility and create them manually when he needs or have MRP drive them. And then finally, event Kanbans. And these are kind of the coolest Kanbans that we have, I think. I mean, it really give you the most functionality and they're perfect for a make to order scenario. So the different ways we can use them is we can have them triggered directly when we create a sales line. Um, and so, when a sales order comes in for a particular item, it can fire off a Kanban to go make it. And that's the trigger. Before that, there'd be no other, there'd be no uh, production schedule for it. It's only when the sales order comes in. So it's an exact fit for, for really that build to the customer. Um, we also talked about the mixed mode earlier. So when we estimate a production order in NAX, so a traditional production order, that can fire off Kanbans to go and pull components. Um, to, so that that production order can consume that material. Um, then we also have within, so within a, a Kanban, within an event Kanban, you can create additional event Kanban. So it's kind of like a, a, a flow where if, if, if a Kanban is created, then it triggers off another Kanban. Um, so again, that sticks to that pool, pool uh, concept that we talked about. And everything's really can be driven just from that top level. Um, and so you're, the key is here with the event commons is that you're only getting it when you need them. So you're not, the material is not there before you need it. You only get it when you have a production order or sales order comes in. And then finally here, the last one is, is something called pegging event processing. So that allows us to set minimum quantities against items. And we can use Kanban's to actually replenish those minimum quantities. So we have a safety stock levels that we've set against a particular item in a warehouse. We can and we've set up a Kanban against that. We can run pegging event processing, and it will it will generate a Kanban for us to go and replenish that and and uh, get above our safety stock levels. Um, so there's a lot of really useful functionality there for, for managing event Kanbans, especially if you're interested in making sure you don't you don't have material sitting around somewhere uh, before you actually need to consume it. Our Kanban boards, and we'll, we'll look at these in more detail. We have our schedule board, which is used for planning, and uh, and we were able to to uh, kind of smooth our capacity across our different work cells. Then we have our process board, which is used for manufacturing, and which would typically sit on the shop floor so that our production team can see it. And then we also have our transfer board, which is used for transferring material around the shop floor. So our first demonstration is is a fixed quantity Kanban example. Okay, so we have we have a finished product which is called LE assembly make to stock. And then we have one component tied underneath that item. So that, that, that assembly make to stock item is going to be consuming this LE component too. And uh, I believe we're going to have to pull that component from a different warehouse um, to the production warehouse to actually consume it. So let's get into AX. So we we'll just log back in. Okay. So the first screen we come to here is the Kanban process board. And the first thing to point out is that this is a work cell. So each these these this process board is filtered down to a work cell view. So right now we're only looking at the assembly work cell. And these are all our different items that we process through this assembly work cell. So each each line here is a is a Kanban. Um, is a particular Kanban card, pretty much. Um, so the ones to note for this make-to-stock scenario are the two top ones here. So what I have is I'm using a two-bin system. So that the goal is that I'm always going to have two bins uh, because it's a fixed quantity example. So whenever I scan one, complete one of these and scan an empty, I'm going to get it. It's, the system's going to immediately replan me another Kanban uh, for that make that make-to-stock part, just with the same quantity of five. And we can see here, we can see our job status. So we can see that these two are in the plan mode, um, so they're waiting to be produced. 
As you can see below here, we these are some of the ones that we've completed prior. So we can determine how much history we want to, we want to be want to see from our, our Kanbans that were completed previously. Um, so if I select, I've selected this one Kanban up here for this make to stock. And if I look down at the bottom here, I get some useful information. So the first thing that's really important here is, is, is that I get a big X in my supply status. Um, and what this is tied to is it's tied to this LD component, which is the part that I'm going to be picking or need to pick to, to produce my, my finished good. Um, and right now it's telling me that I don't have this item at my, uh, at my production warehouse. Um, so I'm going to need to actually move, I'm probably going to have to move material uh, to bring that in. Additionally to this, you also can see I don't have them tied to it right now. I don't think, or actually, no, we do. Sorry. If we scroll down here, if I go to my production instructions, I can see I can attach any type of instructions I want to basically help my team assemble this product. And you can put whatever you want in here. It doesn't. Um, however you'd want to use this field, but you're able to um, put some visuals in here to, to basically, or some maybe you can put some safety rules that we've seen um, to basically just ensure that, that is, you're, you're giving all the information, making it as visible as possible to, to your production team. So we go back to the picking list. A couple other things, if we go to the right here, I want to show you. So one thing on the top here, we have a cycle time performance indicator. And this is where he's looking at your tack time and what you can do here is you can it can it will tell you um, if you're in the middle it looks like we're doing okay but if we're going too slow according to demand that's out there this little bar will go to the left if we're going too fast it will go to the right we can actually use these little arrows to speed up or slow down our tack time um, so our rate of production there um, to to basically just match what our customers really need um, then we have a couple of of different things or or bars here that to take a look at. So one we have one called the transfer jobs. So what this tells me is these are all the these are the different components or the different combines that are going to be transferred um, to manufacture my parts. Um, so I'm able to visibly see. So for this particular example, for my make to stock part, I see that I have there looks like there's a two combine system that's managing transferring that material from from a raw material from a raw uh, material warehouse to my production warehouse. So I'm able to see that. And what I can also see is that according to the different statuses on this actual little ticket here, I can see that it's planned. So I can see that it's on the, that tells me that it's on the schedule, I mean, sorry, on the transfer board. And so that I know that my material handlers that are moving material around, they are going to see that on the board um, and then complete those transfers for me. So it's just another way of, of gaining visibility across the production um, system. Then down at the bottom here, I can see that I have a, this tells me the actual finished good combines that I have. So these are the production combines. So I can see that I have two that I, for my, for my make to stock that are blue, that match up here, um, that I planned. And then I can see here that there's five that are kind of faded out. And these are faded because I haven't planned them yet. It's not coming through that great right now with the color, but you can see there's a little, there's kind of some red dots going around each of those cards. And that tells me that it hasn't been planned. Um, so only when a, a production combine is planned does it actually populate uh, this this process board for you to make. So that's why there's a, there's questions around should should you have combines automatically scheduled? Because if they're automatically scheduled, they'll automatically come to your production board here, and then your production team will go ahead and say, All right, we need to make these. Versus if they're manually planned, you need a planner to actually schedule them um, before they're shown up on the board here. So this example here is telling me that. In this particular work cell, this assembly work cell, I have five commons for a different part. This is for a different item that we'll look at later that are unplanned. So they aren't showing. That's why they're not showing up on my board right now. And then I also see that I have that little that little circle again with a red red tick in it or red line in it, and that's telling me that those are overdue. So I'm late on those orders. So I definitely need to speed those up and make sure I get those planned and, or figure out why I'm late on those. So the board really has a lot of functionality here. Um, so the first action we need to take from a production point of view is we have this X here, so we need to move material. So let's go to our transfer board, and now we'll be the material handler. Transfer board looks very similar to the process board, but this is all about moving material or moving material um, from warehouse or from location to location. So if I can expand this here, so let me just kind of adjust my grid for a second so I can show you. So what it, what I want to point out is that Again, I have I also am using a, a fixed combine scenario to move this material around. 
And what it tells me on the board here is I'm moving it from warehouse 11 to warehouse 12. Okay. If I go to my picking list again, I can see and I can make sure that I, this, I have this material in warehouse 11. So I'm okay. So I have this component material inside my raw material warehouse. Um, so that means that I can go ahead and complete this transfer. To complete this, I'm going to just select my Kanban and I'm going to press complete. Now, before I press complete, it's just important to note, if you look over here, we have these different scan gun icons. And basically what that means is that if I have this set to complete and I scan, if I physically scan my card, uh, my physical card that's in, in, in the warehouse on the shop floor, I scan it and it will complete it. So I don't have to do this complete inside it, the AX client. I can use it just using my scanner, which is really what we see happen most often normally. But because we don't have a scanner configured for this particular example, I'm going to do it manually throughout through the client. And I'm going to say I'm just going to hit the complete button. And it's going to drop off. It's going to drop off and go to a completed status. So what I see here, if I go back to this overview board where I see the different transfer commons that I have, all of a sudden this one has a big, this has a tick mark on it. So I, I, I know that I've completed that transfer job. So now I only have to complete this other one. Um, it's being kind of called, called for production. So I've completed the transfer. Now let me go back to my process board and see what that did here. Still highlighted on the same fixed um, make to stock Kanban. Now my supply status is, has a green tick mark on it. So that tells me, okay, my inventory is now, is now hit the production warehouse. So now I'm actually ready to go ahead and produce this, this uh, product. And then you can see that I've also, I'm only down to one transfer job here on the, on the right side here. So I'm not waiting for two anymore because I just got one. Um, so now I'm only waiting for one. So let me go ahead and complete this. Just like we said before, we could use our, our, our scanning uh, device to complete it. Um, but, but for this, I'll just do it through the client. And uh, what I get here is it just drops off the board. So now I only have one that's planned. Okay, so this one now shifted to a completed status. And if I look down now at my finished, my overview of my different finished Kanbans, I can see that that make to stock has a tick mark on it. So now I know that material is there. So I'm ready now for shipping. I'll go ahead and pick that and ship that to my customer. So the visibility is great because then, you know, if this is sitting on your shop floor, this board, um, the, the handlers that are moving material from, from that finished goods area to shipping can now see, okay, this is ready to go. We can move this. And the last part of this to kind of keep, keep that fixed quantity um, scenario um, working is that we have to empty these combines. So again, I could scan the ticket again to empty it, um, but I will do it. Let's see, I didn't select the right one. Um, I will do it manually. So I think it's this one. Oh, not that. One. Yep, that one. So there's an empty common button that I can use in the client again, but we, we typically see this done using a, a barcode scanner. But I'll empty it like this. And when I empty it, it's going to immediately, because it's all based off that signal with the fixed fixed quantity, it's going to immediately plan another one for me to my board. So now I have two again. And I have two jobs I need to complete. So material handler knows he's back to two jobs. Finally, again, to keep to keep the fixed quantity process flowing, for this this example that I completed here, again, I'm going to select this Kanban. And I'm going to empty this. And when I empty it, it's going to automatically plan it to my board. So transfer jobs, so the reason we didn't get this message from our transfer board, transfer boards aren't planned, aren't, aren't scheduled. So when you create a transfer job, it automatically goes to your board. Um, but production, because it's, you know, the production schedule is a lot more detailed normally. Uh, the, there's, there's a decision to be made whether you want it manually or automatically planned. In this case, I said I want it to be automatically planned. So because I scanned it empty and I was down to one bin, it automatically planned, me, planned another, another Kanban for me. And again, now you can see that if I refresh here, you can see that I've emptied it. So if you looked at this make to stock, my two cards here, now they're blank. I've lost my tick mark because someone's come and picked that material and shipped it to my customer probably. So now I'm back to two and it says, okay, we need to get back to it. We need to go ahead and produce another, another Kanban for this example. So that's our make to stock scenario. And we looked at the, just to recap, we looked at the process board and we looked at the transfer board. So the next one, we're going to look at a scheduled Kanban. 
So our, our finished good Kanban is ca called LE prod Kanban, and, and our component that we're consuming in this example is called LE case. And we have this in, we have this inventory on hand at our production warehouse already. So we're not going to need to use the transfer board for this scenario um, because the material is already there. So if I hop back into AX, first thing we need to do is I'm going to go to my schedule board. So again, the schedule board is, works the same way as the process board and transfer board in that it's based off of work cell. So again, I'm looking at my assembly work cell. And what I see here is I refresh is I see that I've completed, if you see these two commons here, one on Thursday and one on Friday, I got a tick mark in there. That's because those are the ones I just completed in my scenario that we just went through. So this is kind of the planner's area here. What you can do is you can see that we can filter between the, the combines that we have, and then we can also filter just to on, unplanned combines. So I wanted these combines to be ones that we would manually schedule. So what I can do as the planner is I can just go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to drag this. It's a simple drag and drop functionality. I'm going to drag that combine up here. And it take the cool thing is that it takes up as much space in this in this uh, this bucket kind of this daily bucket here as the quantity that's tied to it. And it also pulls that same color in. I'm going to go ahead and drag another one in here. Let's see. Drag another one and fill up. So I can start as a planner, I can start to see how planning these commons is affecting my capacity. So I can say, okay, I'm about 50% of my capacity on that day. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll plan some more to Thursday. Maybe I'll plan another job next week. And so that's just kind of the easy way to, to plan out. And it's very visual to see how you're managing your capacity because it's updating at the bottom here the total quantity that each Kanban you're planning um, is having on, on that particular work cell. Um, again, it's really useful having these little keys here. So we have the tick mark that tells us we completed it. We have the red dot in our circle that tells us that it's late, it's overdue. So maybe if, you know what you can do here is the planner came in, so hey, this is overdue. I can just drag this all the way across. I'm going to move this to Tuesday. It's still telling me it's overdue. Maybe this one takes a long time to make, and I'm not still not going to make Tuesday. Um, so it's just good feedback for your planner. The other thing here to notice is that, again, we have our colors. So these colors pull over from board to board. So it's it's instead of having it be difficult if you were using, because a lot of times you'll have multiple products going through the same work cell. Um, so in this example, if you're using a product family, and they're all going through the same work, so you may have a number of items. So you may want a way to differentiate them when you look at this board, and you, you can manage kind of which items are um, being planned on what days, and whether items maybe are overdue. So the way this is being looked at right now, this board is in daily buckets, so I'm looking at it capacity by day. I'm also able to change this, um, I'm able to move between periods, and I'm also able to change the date I want to look at here, just by selecting my date. And I'm also able to change whether I want this. To, I can also view this in a weekly bucket. So I could look at week, you know, whatever the week is. And I can look at total capacity and just plan to that week and not plan to the day. So that's an option um, that you could think about using. But for our demonstration, what we've just done is we've planned them. So now if we go back to our process board as the production team, go back to my process board and I refresh, I should see a... And now I've got a number of Kanban's called LE prod for a quantity of 20 that I've just planned. So now the production team, team sees, oh, wait a second, these have all come onto the board. We need to go ahead and produce these. So let me just select one of these for now. Like I said, the material is on hand. It's in our production warehouse. And I'm going to go ahead and complete this. Drops off the board. So I've completed that Kanban. Okay. And there's no reason to empty it because in this scenario, once I've completed it, it it's just it's it's completed. And because it's a schedule, this is going to be asking either MRP to generate new comp plan commands for me, or it's going to be asking my planner to create them manually for me. So it's not gonna it's not gonna create a new one for me or reschedule to my board. It's just kind of a one-off and it's done and I've completed it. Now we can ship that product to the customer. Okay, so one other thing to, to mention here is around uh, fixed quantity calculations, Kanban calculations. So this ties into the fixed quantity Kanban that we, we saw in that first demonstration. But what this basically allows us to do is that 
it can manage how many bins we're using. So in that scenario, I was I was using a two bin system. And what this will do is it will look at it can look in the system. And this goes back to the integration to your inventory. Is it'll look at past consumption. It'll look at demand forecasts that you have, um, a number of different factors, and we'll run a calculation and determine whether or not you need to increase your bin size. So maybe based off my past consumption, I was using a two bin. If I run my calculation, it may tell me, hey, you need to actually be using three bins uh, to better manage that, that customer demand. I mean, then that can be updated automatically to the combine itself. Um, so it's a really kind of cool tool um, to use if you're, if you're using fixed quantity combines. And then our last demonstration, we're running, we're starting to run a little bit short on time, but our last demonstration is for our make to order scenario. And this is really probably one of the coolest ones um, from a planning point of view and production. But um, and we're going to be we're going to be producing our LE assembly make to order is our part. It's going to be a sales event, and then we're also going to be pulling in LE base as a as a uh, as a transfer combine. So let me go back into AX now. One thing I want to point out really quickly is that the component that we're pulling in is, is using a Kanban line event. So that means right now it's not on the board here. There's no LE, well there's one that we completed earlier, but there's none that are that is on the board waiting for us to, to transfer. That's because it's all being driven from that. Once that sales order is created, not only is it going to create a Kanban to fulfill that order, it's also going to create the Kanban to transfer material, material um, from the raw material warehouse to the production warehouse. So it's it's going throughout the whole bill of material, and it's it's we're using event commons to trigger off the whole process. So it's really really fitting well with the idea of of, of just having the material when you need it for that particular customer. So let's so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new sales order. I'm just going to select one of the default customers here. Oh wasn't a good one to pick so let me just fill out my mode of delivery and we'll open up our sales order lines and I'm going to put a new line for let's see what was the it was LE so LE assembly make to order was our part and I'll put in a quantity, let's say make, a lot of times make the order maybe a, a higher, um, more valuable product that you're selling. So we'll just say we'll sell a quantity of 10. And when I save this line, so the trigger is literally when I enter this line and I save it, control S, it fires off those commands for me automatically and plans into my schedule board. So it's immediate. So like the visibility you get and the, the efficiency of placing an order and for production to see it is really, is, is really makes it easier. Um, for your supply chain. So what I can see if I go to my pegging event processing directly from my sales order line, I'll see that what it's done, it's gone off and it's actually planned that Kanban to my assembly uh, work cell. Okay, and the date is to match the delivery date that's tied to that that particular um, customer in sales order. And then it's also um, created the transfer uh, to move my material from the raw warehouse to my production. So it's gone through and it's blasted through the bill of material and I've, I've created events for all of these different functions. Um, to produce this particular item and get it to my customer. So if I go back now, if I leave my sales order and I go back to my transfer board and I refresh, I'll see here now that I've got a I've got an option called LE base, which is not planned. I mean, sorry, which is it's always going to be not planned because we don't plan them to the transfer board. But what it tells me is that it's not completed. So I need to go ahead and produce this as the material handler or, or transfer it. So again, I'm just going to complete this in the client. And this is a batch, so this is an example of a batch controlled item. So this particular item has batches tied to it. And this is how you would handle batches. Um, and I'm just going to register my batch so just to show you if you were using those dimensions, this is what it would look like. And I'll register it. It tells me I picked it and I've completed my transfer. So if I do that, it'll drop from not planned to completed. Okay. And then if I go over to my process board, which is, where is it now? Oh, I think I lost my, looks like I lost my process board. So let me reopen it. So on my process board, I'm going to see a green tick mark because I moved that material. And if I look here, if I find my, 
let's see, where's the one that's planned? So right here for a quantity of 10 is planned and you can see this one's tied to a pink color. If I go to my picking list, I can see, okay, I've moved this material over so my supply status is green. What you can also see is if I hadn't have done that before, you can see that it's pegged against another Kanban. So it's not just pegged against inventory. This component is pegged against another Kanban that is another event Kanban that is basically triggering it to move that material. Um, so let me go ahead and complete this. So I go to my manufacturer tab, go to complete. I'm going to produce this Kanban. Drops off my board and is ready to be shipped. Now the last thing I want to show you here is from a sales point of view, if I, sorry, if I go back into my sales order, my sales line, if I refresh my pegging tree, I can see that it's been, my job status has been completed. Okay, so you can, you can see that production has completed this. And so again, that gives you great visibility between your production team and your sales team so that they know that they get immediate feedback when you've actually completed production. There's no need for, you know, contacting back and forth. If they look at the pegging tree, they can see, okay, that Kanban's been completed. So we know we can go ahead and ship this order. Okay, so that completes my uh, demonstrations. If we, let's uh, go back to my PowerPoint here. We look at, so we're, have some time, a few minutes for some questions here, I think. Let's see if there are any were any questions. Let me see if I can unmute. So everybody should be unmuted. So if anybody has any questions or anything they want to address, I'm more than happy to, to answer anything. I uh I don't know I, if that was a question being asked for me, but I couldn't I couldn't hear it. It was um it was fading out. Um, there's another way. Maybe you could try to ask it again. It's just your, your audio sounded didn't sound great. Or you can type it in the type it in the question. Okay, here we go. Hold on a second. All right, so I do see some, trying to make this bigger here. Your answer is you going to answer? Yeah, but what, are, what is the answer? It can be consumed, it, but it doesn't have to be. It depends on how you set it up. Okay. So, just seeing the first first question, just looking at this question from Joe um, around item in a fixed comma is not consumed via a bomb consumption. So this is really just a setup based off your setup. So you can have it based off. Um, where it is in, in the bill of material, um, so it, it, you have some flexibility in terms of just how you how you set it up in the bill of material. Yeah, and just to add in, this is Charlotte again. Um, so when you a fixed kanban, you have kind of when you're setting up the production flow, you do the transfer. There is an update on hand on pick and an update on hand on receipt. So you can basically, if you wanted to configure it where it's consumed. It's consuming into the production flow based on the transfer. You'd say update on hand on receipt no, and it would transfer that material to WIP. And then, as Jeremy said, in your bomb, you would have it. It would not consume out of the bomb. And the other missing piece is uh, picking activities. So your picking activity in the production flow for that process activity would say no. And um, Patrick Chen actually just wrote a nice blog on picking activities. It's probably worth reading on our website that we can point you to. That kind of Help explain how the picking works with lean. But if you if you want to fix Kanban to go to inventory, 
you would just have it set up to transfer from inventory to inventory, and then you could consume it, again, like Jeremy said, based on the bomb start or finish principles. The other question on here that we have is, um, on the unplanned production combines, how does the planner know the deadline those tickets need to be ready? So that, that really depends on the type of combine that you're using for production. So if it's a if it's a fixed quantity combine, then it's it's not driven off the uh, off a date. It's it's driven off the, the the combine quantity that you've set. So whenever it's all driven from when you scan something empty, that's your replenishment signal. So there's no date tied to that. If it's a scheduled combine, then it can be driven from uh, a lot of times we'll see that it's driven from MRP. So MRP can generate the Kanban for you um, based off if it's looking at a sales order or a forecast. MRP knows the date that it needs to be ready. Um, and so that's the date that will be pulled to the Kanban. And then finally, if you're using an event Kanban, then that date is, is solely pulled from the, is directly pulled from the sales order. Um, so it really depends on the type of, of Kanban that you're using. So I think that's, oh, we got, sorry, another question here. Can you overbook a work cell? How do you flex capacity by the day? Um, so it's, there are some, there's some setup where you can determine how you want to handle capacity on your work cell. So you can, you can decide if you want to, to overload the work cell or just schedule it on there anyways, even though you've maxed out capacity. Um, you can you can decide if you want to, to just move it to the next day, or the or whether you just want to to not schedule it. Um, and so that's that's defined on the uh, work cell capacity model. Um, and so it's just a way of you can predefine how you want to handle those scenarios. So another question here is purchase comma understand there is an option. Will it work the same as those displayed? Yeah, so the answer to this is that uh, the purchase combine is, is part of something that we've done as part of kind of in, in an add-on solution, which we've just ticked to the next slide on, which we'll go into a little more detail on. But it's um, it's basically, it we, we've created a, a, a purchase board, so it looks the, very similar to the, the, the transfer and process boards that we, we saw um, throughout the demonstration. So it does work the same. Okay, so the next question here is, will Kanban quantity calculation work for the number of cards as well as quantity slash cards? So Kanban quantity calculation is only calculating the number of bins, so the number of Kanban. So it's not telling you to adjust the quantity. Um, so the quantity you've defined per bin, so if, you have, if you're saying you have two bins with a quantity of 10, it's not going to tell you to say keep two bins but adjust them to 20. It's going to tell you to say get three bins with a quantity of 10. So it's only looking at your total bin quantity, not the quantity itself. And just another note on that for Kanban calculations, it only calculates for fixed quantity Kanbans. And I think if you think about it, the fixed quantity is the quantity per card, so it's always fixed. So we're always calculating the number of cards. It's different than anybody else. It's the same as the past. But that's how we're talking about it now. Right? That's how we take a look. That's always ever taught us what we've done. Okay, so I think that's... Ninety percent of our stuff is on the simple online system. Oh, yeah. Visual form of this. So I think that that finishes all the questions. So we'll we'll go into a few slides now about some add-on solutions that we have, and we'll let Charlotte go through those with you. All right. We just kind of. As some of you probably already know, we have a couple add-on solutions at EVEX that I wanted to make you aware of. If you have additional questions on these, please just email us and we can go into them deeper. So the ones I thought would be interesting right now are the lean manufacturing extensions. So I'll talk you through a little bit about what we have to offer. Uh, we have an engineering change management solution. We've done some really cool things as well around Power BI and connecting that to AX that I wanted to at least make you aware of. Um, as part of that same solution, we have an enterprise data modeler, which helps really with development in AX, um, taking that into more of a consulting role, and, I, and I'll go into that. And then we've done some, some optimization for, for discrete manufacturing as an accelerator using lifecycle services. So 
First of all, our lean manufacturing extensions. Um, everything that we've done, you can kind of see here, and we have some marketing literature on our website if you ever want to go into a little more detail. The most interesting things, so as Microsoft purchased the solution from Ebex, um, we have since continued implementing it. And every time we come across a gap as we're implementing this with customers, we evaluate whether it makes sense to put it as part of our solution so that all the customers um, out there could benefit from it. So a lot of the pieces, interestingly, are around uh, the vendor relationship. So purchase Kanban is one of those. And yes, it works just like any other Kanban. You can set it up as scheduled, event, um, fixed. It just uses a different board, as Jeremy said. We've got a portal behind that so you can communicate with a vendor. And I have a couple screenshots I'll show you of that. Uh, another big piece that we've done is quality integration with Lean. So quality associations as standard don't work with Lean manufacturing as they would with standard purchase or standard uh, production. So we've done the integration for that. We've done a lot around reporting, especially when it comes to the back push costing reporting and just understanding where all Kanbans are in the process. And then finally, we've done a little bit around long-term capacity planning as part of the SNOP process. So here, again, as Jeremy said, the, the purchase Kanban, you can see the board right there. It looks like any other board. It's triggered just like any other Kanban. Uh, the difference is when we pull it in, it creates a purchase order in the background, and you can use the portal to connect to your vendor. And that's just an example of the portal. Vendor managed inventory is another thing that we have an add-on for and also connects with, um, I mean, could connect with a portal if you wanted it to. But it's a great way of, a lot of lean companies have vendor managed inventory where it's not owned by them until they use it or pull it across the pull boundary. All right, um, engineering change management. So this is a solution that really helps from the integrating engineering changes that come out of your PLM system or just your engineering department and trying to introduce those into AX. So it's, it's used for creating engineering items, bombs, and revisions. We use an engineering change order to release those into AX. We have an impact analysis that shows you if we change this revision or we change this bomb, what's it going to do for production, purchasing, how many open sales orders do I have, that type of information. We have approval workflows, so it can go through the various departments before it gets released. And then uh, it's got an XML or an Excel integration to help integrate with PLM so that you can upload a lot of these changes. So you can kind of see here the standard process uh, for engineering change management. Again, it's really providing that link between AX and your engineering department or PLM system. We've, we've got a simple revision control using the standard dimensions in AX. And we have an impact analysis that helps show what's going on with the supply chain. And here's an example of engineering change order. So you can see at the top it's got workflow submission. Um, and that's just, again, helping go through the various departments before we release it as an active bill of material into production. All right. So another really exciting thing we've done at EVEX is we have this rapid return data modeler. So what we've done is we've really connected Power BI with AX. It's one of the things that's missing. So Power BI is a great tool, um, but what, what it doesn't do is doesn't provide a connection immediately with Dynamics AX. So we've done all the hard work in the background, and we've provided a bunch of dashboards that you can see to the right here with CEO, CFO to do that connection for you. Um, if you take a look here, you can see some of the dashboards in action. So what you're looking at is Power BI connected in real time to your AX database. And again, we've just created those dashboards up front in the background for you. So we've done all the hard work of connecting AX and Power BI. And then as part of that solution is also what we call the ERP data modeler. So this is a really cool tool that is probably just useful to show. So basically what you can do is to help uh, accelerate development. So if you have a new form that you're trying to design um, in AX as part of a customization, as part of your implementation, we've created this tool that lets a consultant easily pick and design that and then export it as a project 
and put that into AX. So it's, it's quite a good piece to, again, help accelerate those implementations. And on top of that, we have our manufacturing implementation accelerator. So we've done a lot around lifecycle services to use, for example, the configuration manager to start getting uh, rapid implementations going. Um, some components for us are clearly lifecycle services, but also the development modeler that we just talked about. So we're, we're not only looking to um, accelerate from a template point of view with pre-configured settings and easy import of data, but we're also doing it from a development point of view for FDDs and gaps. So thank you guys all for joining us today. Um, we have some things coming up and some offerings that you might be interested in. So we have uh, what we do, a couple things, a project audit, where we come in and we take a look at your implementation and we can make recommendations off of it. We have what's called a proof of concept. So we come in and you might be interested in implementing Lean, for example, and we would come in and do a week-long discovery uh, modeling and presentation back to you to show you exactly what it would look like with your setup. And that just gives you a good feel before you kind of take a firm commitment, what it's going to look like and how it will help you. We also have a supply chain health check. So coming in, understanding what you're doing around your supply chain today and offering suggestions, whether it's around your vendor management, subcontracting, MRP, those types of things. And then we have a lot of upcoming webinars that you can find on our website ebex.com backslash events. So please join us for any that look of interest to you. If you have any questions, you can always uh, email Jeremy or myself. We'll be happy to help. Um, but other than that, I'll say thank you for joining us this afternoon. And I'll let Jeremy sign off as well. All right, yeah, thanks guys for joining. All right, enjoy the rest of your days.